Hello everyone, my name is Kuya Handel. I'm a PhD student at uh, our lab and PCS research group at the University of Amsterdam. And I will present our joint work with Ilya, Andrew and Anna about paraclick scalable algorithm for AMS click models. Uh, so to start, uh, let's uh, first start with a quick introduction. So uh, just consider this user who is uh, interested to know about more uh, uh, web counts. So he will query this uh, in a typical search engine. And at the search engine side, there is a ranking function and a huge collection of documents. Uh, so uh, this ranking function then will retrieve the most relevant documents to this query and show them to the user as search results. Then this user will uh, interact with these search result page uh, by some means, uh, mainly clicks. And uh, we know that from previous research that clicks could be used as relevant signals, but we cannot unfortunately use them directly because they suffer from different types of biases. So that's why we go to use uh, click models. And in this uh, work, we focus on the ones that are based on probabilistic graphical models. And these models uh, usually, uh, so, the, so they, they can consist of some uh, events that are defined. For example, the event of a user clicking on a document or examining the document based on assuming some, uh, some presumptions on user behavior. And uh, we uh, process these models with some parameters that we uh, need to uh, do the processing. Like for example, in this figure, you could see a, a simple illustration of position-based model, PBM, uh, which has two types of parameters, attractiveness and uh, examinations. And we try to estimate these parameters using different algorithms, for example, a maximum likelihood or expectation maximization. But for previous research so shows that uh, generally some of the models that are trained with EM perform better. So in our work, we focused on uh, EM-based click models, uh, but there are some computational challenges when you want to train such models. For example, um, uh, to have a sense, we try to train a simple PBM with uh, 8 million search sessions of Yandex data set, and it took 12 hours, uh, which uh, sounds to be a lot of time. And on the other hand, there is a massive amount of uh, click data around the web. For example, uh, you know, for a typical search engine like Google, there are about uh, 3.5 billion search sessions a day, which is very, very huge data. And in addition, user behaviors, we know that they vary over time, but there are new documents and query that are added are into our collection over time. So we need to retrain in these models after some time. Uh, which means that there is a training scalability challenge for these models. Uh, and what we propose is to use uh, parallel uh, parallelism and by using more computational resource in parallel. Uh, so ideally, what we want is that to, to be able to estimate the model parameters in parallel through independent tasks. But uh, unfortunately for this application, as like as many other applications, it's hard to define such independent tasks because the tasks are dependent a bit because the model parameters and data are, uh, have some level of dependency. For example, in this application, we have uh, some model parameters in this circle that we, the different colors associated with different types of model parameters. And uh, we have a click lock. We try to estimate the new values of uh, the accurate values of these model parameters through an algorithm like EM which is an iterative process. But if we take a closer look on how these um, model parameters are actually estimated, we see that uh, they depend on different parts of the data and uh, this click lock. And sometimes they depend on similar parts of these click lock data. On the other hand, we know that uh, if we want to estimate new values of these parameters, uh, we need the values from other parameters. So that means we also have some kind of level of dependency between model parameters themselves, which makes it harder to just uh, naively split our data and data, um, model parameters into different tasks and try to process them in parallel, because then that would lead to a lot of uh, you know, communication or synchronization between these tasks, which means not utilizing your resources efficiently. So the question is, how should we define these tasks such that we end up with the least, the least amount of dependency between these tasks? 
So to tackle this issue, we produce, uh, we propose the, the, uh, the Parkley algorithm. Uh, in this algorithm, we try to efficiently define tasks based on PCAM approach. PCAM is a uh, design approach for parallel application. It consists of four different uh, steps, partitioning, communication, agglomeration, and mapping. Uh, and uh, I will uh, uh, explain this in a moment. And uh, during this task definition, we would like to uh, achieve less dependency between tasks. And we also are interested to have balanced workload among our parallel tasks. Uh, in addition, we, 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 we try to, so the Paraclick allows us to have a generic algorithm for EM-based click models. So this is good. We, we are not designing specific models for each, uh, each of these models. So it's, uh, it's very good. Uh, so to have a better understanding of how this model looks, we could take a look of this figure. Uh, this figure shows uh, how Paraclick can be applied to a model like PBM. But uh, in the paper, we also show that this is uh, the same analogy could be used for the rest of EM-based click models as well. So in this model, we have uh, attractiveness parameters and examination mainly. Uh, so to start, in the first step, we uh, we, we have to start somewhere. So we assume, we assume a separate task per each of the parameters that we have in this model. So one task per attractiveness and examination for each of them. And then we, like, we, we know that these tasks are not independent. So we have to analyze how much they are dependent, how much data should be communicated or shared between these tasks and whether this choice of task definition makes sense or not. Uh, by doing this, we could observe that for uh, EM-based models, uh, also PBM, uh, there are many query, majority of model parameters are query document dependent, like attractiveness, which means that they only depend on query, uh, they, 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 they do not, we, we do not require all of the query, doc, uh, all of the other attractiveness parameters to estimate a, a specific one of them, uh, which is very good. Uh, but on the other hand, they need few of examination parameters. But if we take a look at examinations, we see that they actually depend on many of these attractiveness parameters. So they, they, they really need to uh, share or communicate with many of the tasks. And as the number of attractiveness are a lot, this means that this choice of task definition uh, leads to significant communication uh, requirements. So we suggest that um, we consider n tasks, and then we try to aggregate and agglomerate these initial tasks that we defined into these n tasks, such that uh, uh, we try to split attractiveness tasks distinctly into these n final parallel tasks, but we would like to also replicate the computing that we need for examination in all of these tasks. So all of them will process all examinations, but they process distinct attractiveness parameters. And lastly, we have to uh, decide how these uh, tasks are actually executed. So uh, we, we do this mapping for a multiple shared memory machine, but this could be also uh, um, investigated for other architectures as well. Uh, so we map each task to a separate core and we share examinations between all of these cores because they need uh, to, uh, to, because all of them will process them, but we, uh, we don't share attractiveness. And uh, as a result of this choice, uh, we note that because examinations are estimated in each of these tasks partially, there would be a need of uh, synchronization at the end of each iteration of uh, this task execution. So basically at the end of each iteration of expectation maximization, we need to do a global synchronization for examination, but fortunately we don't need to do that for attractiveness problems. Now at this point, we know that these tasks uh, have uh, have not significant communication between them, which which is good. This means that they can execute um, very dependent of each other, just to just a final small synchronization at the end. But uh, are these tasks balanced? Because if they're not, they they need to wait a lot of time at the synchronization phase, and they would be idle. So that's not wise choice use of computational resource. So the question is, how should we merge the initial uh, uh, task that we have to the end final task that we want to uh, achieve at last? So one way is to use a simple way of round-robin fashion. We iterate over initial tasks, 
and then we assign them successively to the final tax one by one. But as we have different amount of uh, search sessions for like head queries and tail queries, you could imagine this could le lead to imbalanced workload and inefficient processing. Uh, the other thing that we can do is to use an, an algorithm like minimum utilization, which means that we start iterating over initial tasks and we assign them to least occupied of uh, final tasks at each time of uh, uh, part uh, at each time that we we aggregate the task together. This could uh, this way we keep track of the task workloads as well. Uh, so let's uh, see some of the results uh, to see how this also this algorithm works in practice. We've used three subsets of Yandex relevance prediction data sets with one, ten, and fifty million search sessions of the size. The first eighty percent of data was used for training, and the last twenty percent after filtering. Uh, unseen test queries for evaluation. And we do our case studies for PBM as a representative of simple position-based models and click chain model CCM as a representative of more complex C, uh, cascade models. And we also do the experiments on a Intel CPU with uh, 256 gigabytes of memory with one to 40 threads and one per each core. So this figure show the scalability analysis, basically the speed up we get for different number of threads and uh, different uh, data set size and different load balancing algorithms. And the left one is for PBM, the right one is for CCM. Uh, we could see that increasing number of threads, we could have achieved a more speed up, which is very good. And uh, also in our biggest ex experiments uh, for CCM, with uh, 40 threads and 50 million search sessions, we get uh, uh, about 25 faster training. And uh, also uh, we, we see in, from these both of these figures that when the data set is larger, the speed up that we gain is also uh, more uh, uh, visible. Uh, we also do a more in-depth analysis of how good we are at uh, uh, this parallel processing. So what we do is that during each iteration of uh, EM, during each task e execution time, we measure uh, different uh, times of this uh, into three sections. The first time that we measure is the amount of computation, which means the amount of time in each iteration that is spent for uh, actually processing and estimating model parameters, which uh, we, we ideally we would like to only spend for this. And also the time that is spent for post-processing, uh, which is a, it's a, something that we do to avoid increased memory usage. We can read more about this in the paper and the time that is spent for the synchronization. You could see in both of these figures that uh, MU outperforms RR significantly. And also you could see that increasing number of threads for CCM has led to better speed ups, which is because CCM is more compute intensive. So it will gain much better uh, in a sense of, uh, you know, from, from parallelism. Uh, yeah, so to uh, conclude, uh, we, in this work, we introduce uh, uh, ParaClick, which is a generic scalable product algorithm for EMBS click models training. We, we showed that we can reduce the training time, improve the scalability of the training significantly. Uh, there are also more uh, results in the paper uh, that I encourage you to read. And also we uh, provide an efficient implementation of Paraclick for shared memory machines uh, that uh, we, we would be very happy to, uh, we encourage you to use that and uh, we are interested to hear your feedback. But, and also this work can be uh, continued in this directions. For example, uh, we could uh, think of uh, larger scale distributed training by uh, you know, not using shared memory architecture. We could also train to try faster, train faster with GPUs and extend this algorithm for more complex models. And uh, yeah, so you could use this open source implementation via this link. It has it supports PBM, CCM, PBM, and UBM currently, and uh, we plan to uh, support this uh, uh, in future. And also, you could uh, scan this QR code for more details. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for uh, listening, and uh, uh, please uh, feel free to get in touch if you have more questions and would like to talk about this. Uh, thank you very much. Great talk, uh, Puya. Thanks a lot. Thanks thank a lot. You. Any question from the audience?
for Puya. I remind you, raise your hand or put it in the chat. Huh? Okay, I have one, Puya. Okay. Just wondering, so Grid Talk, uh, very, very nice uh, application, po uh, let's say designing of, an, of a parallel algorithm for, uh, for, uh, for your task. I was wondering uh, if you consider also trying to map uh, the sequential algorithm to a map reduce paradigm. Is it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we, we didn't uh, in this, uh, uh, but uh, like, uh, no. In, Do you think in... it's possible? That, uh, yes, but uh, it's also possible to do that, I think, uh, and uh, uh, it would be interesting in the sense that you could uh, uh, you could take benefit from that in the sense that you, you would have a more distributed uh, training yes. fashion of uh, data, and then that's more favorable as well. I, I'm asking because uh, he, while I was hearing at your presentation, uh, so my question was, he, he, you you are now basically bounded in the, in the number of cores of the of the machine right while uh, if you if you go on on a map reduce paradigm with i mean uh, frameworks like for example spark or, or others you can basically scale to number of machines in the in the uh, data center that is actually a bit more uh, an higher number so that that's why i'm asking this part very, yeah, very sure. interesting and good yeah. application uh, we, we think that we, uh, it's also interesting in the sense that uh, you could consider this in a multi-node fashion, then uh, you could have this, uh, so, so you, could, you could have this setup in your, uh, you know, in each uh, um, like machine that has many cores, and then between them, you also could consider running something on top of it, like Spark or something together. So it would, it would uh, benefit from both sides, you know, like having- the, uh, I see. So yeah. you, you basically mean mixed strategies. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Thanks yeah. a lot again for your, for your talk. Sure. Thanks. <laughs>